Got it. Randy, too. Uh, is, is there not or Dexter on the line? No, they are not. They're not yet. All right. We'll give them a couple minutes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pico just came on. All right, we'll give them one more minute and then we'll get started.
Dexter just came in the room. All right. Well, I said we're going to do a minute and spend a minute. So I'm going to call the meeting to order at 6.06 p.m. Um, start with the roll call. Alderman Downey is here. Alderman Gulato. Here. Alderman Clinker. Here. And Alderman Johnson. Here. Uh, Alderman Alexander. She is absent. All right. Uh, next, uh, approval of the minutes. I sent the minutes earlier this morning. Is there a motion to approve? Clinker. Clinker with the motion. Fred, would you like to second? Yes. Alderman Pilata, second. All right, we have to do a roll call vote. Um, so Alderman Downey is an aye. Alderman Pilato. Aye. Alderman Clinker. Aye. Alderman Johnson. Aye. All right. That is four eyes. The motion to approve the minutes is passed. All right. Citizen comments. Uh, we did receive one. Just one second so I could pull it up here. In my email. Um, Finance Committee uh, public comment hail to pay screen. Let's get serious about Blue Island's future. From the beginning of time, Blue Island has existed with basic life support ambulance service, and that is no longer safe. Soon, Blue Islanders will no longer live as second-class citizens, and Blue Island will make history when advanced life support, advanced life-saving services are fully implemented. Blue Island's future is brighter thanks to Alderman Dexter Johnson and Alderman Alan Stevo, who took the issue and need for advanced life-saving services seriously. We need to change the culture at City Hall. And get aldermen who serve in respect, aldermen who are willing to turn and look instead of follow, follow. Blyo needs more effective elected officials committed to focusing on problem solving, caring for the community, and all its residents, making Blue Island better. Advanced life saving services 100% fully funded at no cost to Blue Island. That means residents and the public needing ambulance services will be safer when transported to the hospital. Had Finance Chair Capadani who acted instead of stalled, advanced life saving services would be farther along in implementation. Instead of initial stages, along with advanced life-saving services, saving lives, advanced life-saving services will add value to the community. Additionally, Blue Island may also be able to receive an ambulance at no cost. It's 2020 and up to Blue Island Alderman, ready and able to pivot, turn and look, move things in a righteous manner, and add services of value to improve Blue Island. Finance Chairman, Finance Chair Alderman Donahue brought Blue Island's Finance Committee down in a hurry omission of verbatim public comment and finance committee meeting minutes, even though Chairman Don here has full access to the written public comments, denying alderman comment, multiple open meeting act violations. There's been no follow-up to get itemized bills for well-connected law firms to rely on alderman for review. Follow-up reports for Sergio Acosta have not revealed any new information, no follow-up or shift to centralized purchases to get best value. No follow-up for hand sanitizing stations throughout Blue Island or city owned buildings. No consistent follow-up regarding a correction action plan for Longwood flooding and the $1.5 million grant money paid to Robinson Engineering or contractors. And there was no thoughtful discussion, consideration, or follow-up for no less than five months regarding a transition to advanced life-saving services for the city of Lyon. The Finance Committee should look at the Chatham Street Bridge. Is it part of the CalSAC Trail? And should payments for the bridge maintenance come from CalSAC Trail funds? Blue Island Alderman can do better, and Blue Island deserves better. All right, thank you, Ms. Green. All right, moving on. Um, we're going to go a little bit out of order under new business. We're going to start with uh, item D, the Sergio Acosta Tahoe investigation update. Uh, before we start, just wanted to make a quick comment. I want to take our time on this. Uh, this is obviously a very important issue to our city. Uh, there's been obvious examples of obstruction by the mayor and the city attorney. Uh, the mayor promised us answers in February 2019 and has still not provided us with anything. We're just trying to educate ourselves, the full city council, and most importantly, the residents of our city. Um, so with that being said, I'd like to turn it over to, to Mr. Acosta, who's been uh, heading up this investigation regarding the purchase of the Tahoe's. Uh, Mr. Acosta, if you'd, uh, if you'd like to go. Go ahead, sir. Sure, good evening, everyone. I appreciate uh, you giving me this opportunity to uh, update you on the, uh, on the investigation. Um, briefly, just as an overview, uh, we have attempted in the last several months to interview the uh, city attorney, uh, Mr. Horvath, the mayor, uh, Mayor Vargas, uh, as well as uh, Augustino Corcus, uh, all of whom have re, uh, refused to uh, cooperate with the investigation. 
We've also attempted to get information from Curry Motors to understand precisely how the transaction took place. Uh, Curry Motors through their general counsel has also refused to talk to us or provide any uh, additional uh, information or documents. So let me, let me tell you what we, what we do know uh, up to this point. Uh, as early as July of 2018, uh, we have, uh, I should say one, one additional thing before I get into that. We did meet with uh, the city clerk, uh, Mr. Heuser. Uh, I believe it was in late January. Uh, I will say he was uh, very accommodating to our schedule, provided us with a great deal of information, answered all of our questions. So he's been uh, uh, very cooperative in this, in this process. So what, what we do know is going back to uh, July of 2018, uh, it appears that uh, Mr. Corcus, Augustino Corcus, was attempting to uh, get a government uh, uh, email domain address that he could use. Uh, there were communications in late July between Mr. Corcus and the, uh, the law firm that uh, represents the city, uh, Odelson. Uh, he was apparently trying to get them to sign off on a contract, some sort of proposed contract for something that he refers to in his email as a city phone app, or better put apps, plural. Um, we don't know what those were about. Um, we then have uh, uh, Mayor Vargas following up in, on August 1st of 2018 to the law firm asking them uh, to please follow up, uh, uh, demanding that they contact him no later than the end of that day with respect to uh, this uh, phone app issue. He states in the email, which is directed to uh, an attorney at uh, Odelson Sturk, George Robinson, but copies to uh, Mr. Horvath, uh, where he states, uh, as you know, the phone app is of great importance, not only to myself, but to the city. I need to know as to where you are regarding the revised agreement, suggesting obviously that there had been some previous agreement. As you know, time is of the essence. Contact me no later than the end of the day. Um, I should also mention that in his email, Mr. Corcus signed off as uh, City of Blue Island Mayor's Office, Mr. Corcus. We have other examples of emails where Mr. Corcus is representing himself to be an official with the uh, City of Blue Island, where he's attempting to get uh, uh, authorization for the domain name, uh, at one point claiming that there are, you know, uh, uh, I believe it's hundreds of employees who cannot do their job at the City of Blue Island unless that uh, domain is, is approved. Nevertheless, uh, that is the earliest we've had with respect to Mr. Corcus. I understand that there's some additional uh, contacts with him going back a number of years, uh, something that he was proposing to do, which uh, uh, did not go anywhere. Uh, he was going to provide some service on a short-term basis, uh, on a trial basis for the city of Blue Island, but uh, there was no follow-up on that. There was never any contract, any agreement for Mr. Corcus to do anything. Moving forward then in August of 2018, uh, August 28th of 2018 is the date uh, that Hinsdale Bank issued a cashier's check. That check was made payable to the city of Blue Island uh, in the amount of almost $77,000. The remitter is listed as di-il.gov, obviously standing for Blue Island, Illinois.gov. Uh, the check was, as I said, made, made payable to the order of City of Blue Island. Uh, that check was then negotiated on September 4th, 2018. Uh, the back of the check shows that it was given to Curry Motors uh, and it was signed by someone uh, uh, purporting to be Domingo Vargas uh, for the City of Blue Island. One of the things that we would have wanted to know from Mayor Vargas and others involved in the transaction including Curry Motors, uh, is whether or not Mayor Vargas was present at the time of the transaction. Was that in fact his signature? Uh, we don't know these things, but that is how the check was, uh, was negotiated. So it was used to purchase the two Chevy Tahoes uh, from Curry Motors. We have the VIN numbers uh, for, those, uh, for those vehicles. Um, there was an application for municipal police license plates uh, that were submitted also on that same date. 
Uh, those uh, uh, requests, those applications list the owner as City of Blue Island Agency, bi-il.gov. On October 15th, uh, we know there was a notice of violation issued by the City of Chicago for one of the vehicles uh, for having an expired uh, 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 tag, uh, temporary tag. <clears throat> October 24th through the 26th of 2018, uh, we have a total of, I believe it is six uh, toll violations for one of the Tahoe vehicles. Uh, those uh, violations occurred between the dates of October 25th through October, excuse me, 20, October 24th through October 26th of 2018. Uh, the violation uh, notice uh, was issued uh, on the uh, 28th of, uh, of October. On the 27th of October, 2018 is when the accident occurred in Niles, Illinois. Uh, we have the accident report. There is a two vehicle accident. The Tahoe, which apparently was hit in the accident, fled the scene. Uh, on October 30th, the uh, Niles police officer who was called to the scene of that traffic accident contacted Mr. Heuser uh, in the city clerk's office to uh, report the fact that this vehicle, which was uh, registered to uh, uh, Blue Island, was involved in the uh, in the in that accident. Um, according to the report, the police report that is, uh, Mr. Heuser stated that Blue Island only purchases Ford vehicles, and that, uh, as confirmed to us by Mr. Heuser, uh, that is the case. He also stated that he would have had to approve any check. Uh, from the city of Blue Island to purchase any vehicles and that no such request had been made nor check issued on behalf of Blue Island. Um, the Niles police officer also indicated that he had contacted Curry Motors in Frankfurt, Illinois, uh, who found the contract for the sale of that particular Chevy Tahoe that had been involved in the accident and that the contract reflected that the Tahoe was purchased directly by the office of the mayor of Blue Island by Mr. Corcus. Again, we don't know whether or not the mayor was present at the time of the transactions, uh, but they apparently indicated that Mr. Corcus purchased it on behalf of the office of the mayor of Blue Island. The uh, city clerk then wrote a letter to the state's attorney's office regarding this tran unauthorized transaction. Uh, a copy of that letter was provided to members of the city council in January of 2019. Um, on November 5th of 2018, certificates of title were issued for the uh, two uh, uh, Chevy Tahoes. They both listed the uh, city of Blue Island agency bi-il.gov as the owner of the vehicles. <clears throat> the uh, municipal police license plates that had been applied for were in fact issued they were returned to the Secretary of State on November 6, uh, 2018, the day after they'd been uh, received. <clears throat> on January 3rd, 2019, as you probably know, uh, Mr. Horvath uh, sent a letter to Mr. Corcus demanding that he deliver the vehicles back to the city. Uh, the letter accused Mr. Corcus of registering ownership of the vehicles in the name of the city without uh, authorization. He specifically stated your unauthorized purchase of the vehicles and registration of their ownership in the city's name has caused a significant problem for which there is no read readily discernible resolution. We do not know because Mr. Horvath would not talk to us whether in fact Mr. Corcus or anyone on his behalf responded to that letter. We also know that on January 7th, Mr. Horvath uh, prepared a letter that was sent to the mayor, the city clerk, uh, the treasurer and alderman of the city council uh, attaching various documents related to the transaction, uh, references to his demand letter that he had sent to Mr. Corcus, <clears throat> and uh, indicating that the information would need to be discussed at the city council meeting on January 8th of uh, 2019. Uh, he had attached approximately 25 pages of documents to that uh, letter. On January 10th, 2019, one of the Chevy Tahoes uh, was recovered, as we understand it, by the uh, Blue Island Police Department. 
The vehicle had been in the possession of Mr. Corcus uh, and parked at an address in Chicago. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Corcus indicated he did not have immediate access to the second Tahoe, but would surrender it when he was done uh, with his work that day. Uh, he delivered the second Chevy Tahoe uh, later that day on the 10th of uh, January, 2019. The second Tahoe is the one that appeared to have body damage consistent with the reported accident that had occurred in, uh, in Niles in October of 2018. Um, on January 21st at city council meeting, the mayor stated that no city funds were used and that he had not purchased any vehicles on behalf of the city. Um, and that's, that's the, the, the timeline of events. Um, leading up to our investigation. The first thing we did was we uh, reached out to Mr. Horvath to interview him. He agreed to, inter to sit for an interview. We uh, were going to go to his office on March 5th of this year. Uh, on the 28th of February, uh, I received a letter from Mr. Horvath indicating that he was canceling our meeting which he mistakenly indicated was uh, scheduled for March 6th um, for the following reasons. He states on January 8th, 2019, I provided the entire Blue Island City Council and the other elected officials with a packet of documents and a detailed summary of all the information I acquired concerning the matters which you have been retained to investigate. I am certain this information has been provided to you. Accordingly, there is no reason for us to meet and discuss anything further. Um, I responded to uh, that letter two days later on March the 2nd, asking him to reconsider, uh, pointing out that there were a number of questions that arose from his uh, previous contacts with Mr. Corcus in the summer of 2018 uh, concerning the, uh, the, the web domain, as well as uh, we wanted to know, had he talked to Mayor Vargas about all of this? Uh, did he get a response from Mr. Corcus to his letter of January, 2019? Uh, what, what more information had he acquired with respect to his uh, uh, investigation, if any, that he'd undertaken? If he had not take, undertaken any investigation, we wanted to know why he hadn't done that. Um, we received no response to our request to, uh, uh, to reconsider. Um, I then again, more recently wrote to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Horvath asking him to, to reconsider. And again, we've received no response from him whatsoever uh, with respect to sitting down with us. Um, we reached out to Mayor Vargas um, and Mayor Vargas uh, did respond. He put us in touch with his uh, criminal defense attorney, uh, Mr. Ron Neville. I spoke with Mr. Neville on the telephone. Mr. Neville indicated to me that in light of the fact that there was still an ongoing uh, investigation by the state's attorney's office, that he had advised Mayor Vargas not to speak to us, uh, the equivalent of, of invoking the fifth. Uh, I told Mr. Neville, uh, because I, I, I understand the circumstances that uh, by invoking the fifth, there would not be a, a, a negative inference taken simply with respect to that invocation of, of his rights. Um, that was the, the, the end of our efforts with Mayor Vargas. He wouldn't, would not speak to us. Um, I did ask Mr. Neville if his client would provide us with contact information for Mr. Corcus. Mr. Corcus is uh, someone who uh, does not have a, a, a large profile on the internet uh, it was difficult for us to, uh, to contact him. Eventually, Mr. Neville did get back to us with a telephone number for Mr. Corcus. So I reached out, left a voicemail for Mr. Corcus, gave him my contact information. Uh, he did respond uh, via email. We exchanged several emails. He wanted to know uh, what we wanted to ask him about. Um, so I sent him a summary of questions that we wanted to uh, sit down and talk to him about with respect to the, uh, to the Tahoes. I told him that our preference would be to meet with him in person to ask these questions uh, rather than just do this by correspondence so that we could ask follow-ups, uh, et cetera, as we normally try to do in, in this type of uh, investigation. Nevertheless, we put together a fairly detailed list of questions 
that we wanted to, uh, to ask him about. Um, initially, he did not respond for several weeks. I followed up with him. Uh, he did respond uh, and sent a rather lengthy email uh, where he complained about um, not wanting to waste his time by talking to us. I'm happy to share the, 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 the email with the, the, the members of the, uh, of the committee. Uh, he claims that he put seven years of his life into working for Blue Island, 12,000 hours of work into what he referred to as the Blue Island Project, and that he had spent, <coughs> excuse me, hundreds of thousands of dollars of his own money on Blue Island Project. Um, he claims that there was an agreement of some sort. He says, is Blue Island going to honor our agreement? Um, return my properties immediately, repair my name and reputation. In any event, it is kind of a rambling email response uh, to which I then responded to him by saying, look, I can't address all of these questions that you are putting to me. We need to be able to sit down and ask you questions. You know, if there was an agreement of some kind, I wanna see a copy of it. Um, what have you spent all of these hours doing? Uh, his response to my, uh, my email then was to say simply uh, that I'm getting paid for my time. He's not getting paid for his. Uh, if we want his cooperation, uh, that uh, Blue Island must do three things. Release his trucks immediately or reimburse him the cost of the trucks. Honor the agreement that was voted on and approved back in 2013, <coughs> which is the agreement I allude to, I shouldn't say agreement, which was the, the circumstance I alluded to earlier where uh, Mr. Corcus was allowed uh, on a trial basis to provide uh, some service uh, and there was no, no follow-up ever done on that. So it does not appear from anything that I could find that there was ever an agreement of any kind with Mr. Corcus. He, his third demand was an apology letter for defaming his name. He had some uh, uh, unpleasant things to say about uh, officials in Blue Island uh, and that was it. So again, I, I, I attempted to uh, get him to engage uh, and respond. Uh, I attempted that a couple of times, uh, uh, June 23rd, and again on July 2nd, uh, with no, uh, no response whatsoever from Mr. Corcus. Um, finally, I think I did mention the uh, Curry Motors. We had reached out to the salesperson who was involved in the transaction. She ended up uh, referring us to the general counsel for Curry Motors. Uh, she in turn advised us that uh, they don't wanna get involved in a civil dispute. I pointed out to her that this has nothing to do with a civil dispute, that they do have information that's pertinent to our investigation. I sent her a copy of the, the council's resolution um, and she chose to ignore that. So, um, we have had uh, virtually every door that we have tried to get through with respect to the investigation closed to us. We have a great deal of documentation uh, with respect to the uh, Tahoe transactions and, and previously uh, some with respect to Mr. Corcus and his attempt to get authorization, apparently with the, uh, the mayor's approval and, and support for that uh, bi-il.gov domain name. Uh, but at this point, what I wanted to do was, uh, you know, put pencils down, report to the, uh, uh, to the committee where we are with respect to the investigation. Uh, I understand that there are some other individuals that we can reach out to to try and get information. But before doing that, uh, you know, given the original uh, direction given to us by the city council, I thought this would be a, a good opportunity to uh, uh, give you this update and, and see where we are and answer any questions you, you have. All right, uh, thank you for that, that um, very thorough update on what, what's been going on. Um, so I, I have a couple questions. Um, so in the beginning, you were, you were mentioning how Mayor Vargas, or I guess really how Mr. Corcus was reaching out to Odelson and Sturk about um, obtaining some sort of access um, for Blue Island. And then Mayor Vargas sent um, a follow-up saying he needs an immediate uh, response. 
Have you uncovered anything about any past business connections between Mayor Vargas and Mr. Corcus outside of what's already been talked about in the last seven years, I guess, regarding whatever the Blyland project is and then these last couple incidences? We, we have we have not. Now, I have to, you know, qualify that by telling you that um, what I would normally do if we we're going to look for something like that is there are uh, investigation firms that, uh, you know, I would bring in to to conduct that type of uh, more thorough background investigation to determine whether or not, you know, oftentimes what can what can happen, and I'm not suggesting this is the case, is you know, people uh, create uh, business entities, LLCs and so forth that um, searching through publicly available databases, um, you know, we're able to determine what businesses people are involved in. Is there a relationship? Uh, looking at addresses perhaps associated with those businesses, we can draw those types of uh, uh, connections, but I have not done that in this, in this case. Got it, thank you. Um... Mr. Acosta, um, Fred Bellotto here. Do we have, um, you mentioned already about the origin of the funds. Uh, do we have any idea where the $77,000 originally came from? Yeah, well, it came from Hinsdale Bank. The remitter is again, bi-il.gov. Um, by all appearances, Mr. Corcus or someone would have had an account at Hinsdale Bank under that corporate name. Huh. But Hinsdale Bank is not going to release that type of information to us just on a request because of, you know, the laws wouldn't permit them to do that. Um, follow up with that. And just, just from my experience, my mom was a banker for 30 years. Uh, if the check is made payable, a cashier's check, no less, made payable to the city of Blue Island, wouldn't that automatically be city of Blue Island funds, even if it wasn't cashed? Well, that, that, that's a, a fair question. Um, I think it's certainly intended to become, you know, by the remitter to become City of Blue Island funds by having it made payable to City of Blue Island. Um, I, I, I can't tell you under, you know, Illinois law or, or any uh, federal statutes whether or not, you know, what the, the status of those funds become um, it was signed over by the mayor or someone purporting to be the mayor to Curry Motors um, for the benefit of, at least again, purportedly Blue Island. Um, I can get you an answer to that, what the legal significance is of having it made payable to the city of Blue Island. Do we know what the, we know that they weren't used by the Blue Island Police Department but you mentioned um, they were issued municipal police plates and they were equipped with police equipment? Correct. But we're not being used by the city of Blue Island. Do you know who was using them? Well, the only information we have is we believe Mr. Corcus was driving one of the vehicles at least. We don't know who was driving any other uh, vehicle based on, on the record that we have. And we know that Corcus was never an employee of the city of Blue Island. That's my understanding, correct. There's no record of him ever being an employee or, or a vendor, contract employee, anything of that nature. Do we know anything other than the signature on the check and Curie Motors saying they were bought for the mayor's office? Do you know of any role the mayor uh, Vargas played in the purchase of the vehicles outside of the check and the Curie Motors statement or bill of sale? We don't. None of the none of the firsthand witnesses to the transaction would talk to us. So I'm sorry, sir. Let me. I had a couple more questions. Um, going back to Mr. Corcus, um, what have you discovered anything in relation to the unauthorized websites um, that he have that he created or has attempted to create? We're not sure what he was trying to use it for, um, but there was uh, obviously pushback from the, uh, uh, the, the, the organization that issues the .gov domain names, mm -hmm. uh, that they needed something more official than what Mr. Corcus was uh, attempting to provide them in order to, to issue that. All right, and, so, and then I guess a follow-up to that, um, why, why would someone attempt to create 
a false website that presents themselves as as a city government, city employee, what what would be the purpose of of doing that when they're not? It's when they're a private citizen. Yeah. Well, look, obviously they're trying to use it uh, in a way that suggests that it's a, a, a an official government website. Now, whether they're you know whether their intention uh, at the beginning of that process was to in fact uh, you know follow through and somehow have it authorized by the city of Blue Island or whether they were up to, uh, whether their intention was uh, more nefarious and to use it for an improper pur purpose, um, we don't know at this point, but it could certainly be the latter. Uh, Mr. Cork. Okay. All right, I, I, I got to rethink my question, go ahead. Well, I still had a couple more, Fred, so. Um, so I guess back to my first question about how the mayor um, and you weren't the mayor, and Mr. Porkis, and there are any past business relationships. Were you able to find any past business relationships with the information that you had between the city clerk, Randy Hoiser, and Mr. Porkis? No. No. Okay. And then following up with that, I know in in your presentation you mentioned um, that the clerk would or the collector would have to authorize the purchase of these vehicles um what what role i guess or what role did the city collector um or his obligation i guess what what is his obligation to bring this transaction to to the full city council because it, it didn't seem like there was an immediate reporting of this transaction by the city clerk until five months down the road if this happened in july and august and we weren't became aware of it until until August, or not August, this happened July, August, and we weren't aware of it until I think it was November, December in the timeline. Yeah, so what, what we do know is that Mr. Heuser learned of this uh, situation with the vehicles when he was contacted by the Niles police on October 30th of 2018. We also know that on October 31st of 2018, he sent a letter to the state's attorney's office um, reporting this. Uh, and if you give me a second, I can go back. I know we, we, we had an extensive conversation with Mr. Heuser with respect to what I don't recall is whether or not the state's attorney may have uh, suggested to him or requested that Mr. Heuser uh, not uh, communicate with anyone while they investigated. I honestly don't recall if that was the case or not. And I, I know Mr. Heuser, I, I don't know if he's on the on the call still here or not, but uh, aside from that, um, I don't know what other obligation he would have had at that time uh, with respect to reporting to the uh, to the city council. Uh, Mr. Got it. Uh, Acosta, Go ahead, Fred. do we know of any outside of the mayor um, you mentioned that agreement from 2013. It predates me on the city council. I don't have a recollection of, of ever reading it, actually. Um, actually, I do. I think someone sent it to me, and I did read it. I, I take that back. Nothing official. Um, was there any agreement made between the mayor or any other elected official with Corcus in that previous in, uh, uh, business thing that he put out back in 2013? Who was involved? No, not, in that I'm, not that I'm aware of. The only thing that, that I've been able to find with respect to that is what's, I believe, reflected in the, the meeting minutes. Uh, from that uh, from that meeting. Okay. Do we know of any other websites that were created outside of the blueisland.gov in relation to Blue Island? No. Um, piggybacking on that, what would be the purpose of creating a website like this without the city council um, being aware of a uh, .gov or anything official going through a city council to approve any of this stuff, what would be the purpose of having a site like that? Again, I don't know if, if you know, the purpose was to uh, come before the city council at some point in time and, and uh, present something with uh, respect to these, uh, the supposed uh, phone app, um, or whether there was some other, as I said, nefarious intent that might have existed here, you know, we're, we're cloaked uh, as a government agency. Uh, someone could try and, uh, you know, get money or, or services or something else uh, 
without uh, without the uh, the other party knowing that this was not an authorized government uh, entity. In your professional opinion, I mean, you've you've been a prosecutor before, uh, uh, state's attorney, and uh, investigator. Would you say the general circumstances of this uh, seem unusual or suspect? Very unusual, absolutely. This is not how, how business is conducted. This is Alderman Johnson. Did you find Hi, anything Alderman. criminal? Did you find anything criminal with your investigation so far? Well, the only, the only potential um, violation so far that, I, that I've seen is, is whether or not did someone forge the mayor's signature on the check? Uh, was, you know, Mr. Corcus by using this bi-il.gov, uh, is it a form of identity theft? Is it a form of fraud of some sort? When he applied for the municipal plates, that appears to have been a misrepresentation uh, in an official document. So there is there is potentially uh, uh, some criminal conduct involved here. Piggy, backing on that, uh, Alderman Johnson and, and, and Mr. Cor uh, Mr. Uh, Acosta, um, I wrote down a bunch of questions here. Uh, is uh, as an experience as an investigator, does it appear to be an evidence of a potential crime here? When I asked you about the suspect thing, would you think there's evidence here? Is put your investigator hat on. There's there's a potential crime that was committed here. There, there's a potential for criminal conduct that yes, but it needs to be further investigated and the facts developed before you can draw that conclusion. Uh, what what? I mean, uh, you mentioned a lot of people not not wanting to cooperate with you. Um, can you go off? I know you mentioned the city attorney, Carrie Horvath. Who else immediately, uh, the mayor, um, that you would need to contact and, and talk with to complete or continue your investigation? Other than it seems like seems like everybody, except uh, the few people you talk to. Um, I got a list of people I want to know if you talked to, but I think you answered some of those already. Um, what would be, who would be the person you won't mostly need to talk to next? Um, would it be the city attorney, the mayor? Well, yeah, again, I mean, we, we, we structured this in the way that would make the most sense for moving forward with the investigation, which was the city attorney first, just to find out what his communications had been with the mayor or with Corcus, which yeah. would help us then in developing the, the line of investigation that we'd want to take with with those individuals. Um, Curry Motor uh, was kind of a standalone in terms of uh, we wanted to know, you know, talk to the person who handled the transaction. Who, who actually was there? Did they make, uh, you know, photocopies of their, of their identification? Is there perhaps a video surveillance of uh, the people in the, uh, in the car dealership so we could see who was there? Um, so, yeah, th 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 those were the people we wanted to talk to to, to get the, the full picture if we could. Um, as far as who we would want to talk to next, um, you know, I suppose we could try and reach out to the mayor's assistant uh, to see if she has any information. But again, outside of that core group, we're now talking about people who may or may not have information. Um, the core group are people who we know will have information if they would talk to us. So really quick, um, back to Curry Motors has, so under, this was all purchased underneath the state purchasing contract is how they're able to get the deal. And that's how Curry Motors is able to sell these because they're part of this larger state contract. Was his inspector general's office been notified that Curry Motors is refusing to participate in this investigation? No. Since they are, this is under a state contract. We've not contacted the inspector general's office um, well, when you say the inspector general, there's the executive inspector general who I don't think would have jurisdiction over this. I think um, it's so I think it would be under the fleet management of CMS who has the jurisdiction um, underneath the state purchasing contract because they're in charge of all the state property and state surplus property and state these overall larger state purchasing contracts. Yeah. So so um Alderman, we have not uh, uh, we didn't view part of our scope of our, our investigation to uh, report potential misconduct to any authorities. We, we can certainly do that um, if, if you want us to. I'd be happy to, uh, to reach out to them and uh, bring this to their attention. 
I, I, I note again that the, uh, uh, the state's attorney, to my knowledge, still has an open investigation. Um, before we undertook uh, you know, this investigation, I touched base with the individual in the state's attorney's office who I understood had the investigation to make sure that nothing that we were going to do was going to in any way interfere or impede their work. And I was assured that uh, we wouldn't. So um, we do know that at least the, the state's attorney uh, is aware of all this and, and had at one point, I don't know if they still do, an open investigation. Got it. So I, I, have, I guess I have one more question. Um, what, what can the city council do to help get these uncooperative participants to participate? Do we need to to pass a resolution that would require the city attorney to, to sit down for an interview, require the mayor to sit down for an interview. We want, I wanna help you get this, get this wrapped up and solved uh, so we can move on. So that's, I'm, I'm just looking for guidance or what do you think would be the next best steps to make, to make the city attorney participate make the, and make the mayor participate because they are city employees. The city attorney is not the mayor's private attorney. He is the overall city's attorney. So he has no obligation to just defend Mayor Vargas. He needs to be defending the entire city. And it seems like that's what he's not doing in this case. Yeah. Well, with respect to the city attorney, um, I, I haven't seen what, what his uh, uh, engagement uh, provides. I defer, I suppose, to, to legislative council to take a look at that and see if there are any provisions in the contract with the city attorney that would require him to cooperate in any uh, investigation to answer questions and so forth. Um, with respect to the mayor, I think that's a little bit different just simply because his attorney has indicated that uh, in light of the ongoing criminal investigation, he is directing the mayor not to answer any questions, whether it be you know, by, by myself, uh, the state's attorney, any law enforcement authorities. Um, and I don't know that any action that the city council could take uh, as a matter of fact, I'm fairly confident that the city council can't take any action that would overcome uh, his invocation of his uh, 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 right to remain silent. Sure. So, but so I guess so. I guess it would be more just in line with, would say with with the city attorney, the the mayor's assistant, possibly the police chief or the former police chief, um, the watch commander who took the phone call from the Niles Police Department. Again, they are city employees and if they're not cooperating, they're not looking out in the best interest of the city. So whatever the city council could do to, to help, we'd, I'd be happy to, to move that forward. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm not aware that any of them are not going to be cooperative, just simply uh, because I, I, I have not reached out to them at this point. Um, you know, I, I, I think the resolution that um, was passed directs city employees to cooperate. So, um, uh, I, you know, and I, I pointed that out to uh, uh, Mr. Horvath in my uh, last community, my follow-up communication with him, uh, and that, again, which was was, was ignored by him. Um, but uh, I think it's already in the resolution. One thing I would I would suggest you could consider in the long term is a uh, uh, an ordinance requiring city employees to cooperate in any investigations. Uh, such as this one, however broadly defined you want to make it, uh, so that it would actually be an ordinance violation for them to refuse to uh, uh, to cooperate. Got it. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Acosta, I know you answered some of these questions, but I just want to make it clear all on kind of one thing. Um, the people I think that need to be talked to, uh, if they haven't been already talked to, which you already mentioned who you have talked to, obviously is the mayor, the city attorney, the city clerk, the city treasurer, uh, the former city administrator, Mike Marzell, Mayor's Assistant Marisol Barrera, City Auditor, uh, CPA, um, Dave Meyer. Um, I don't know if those are already on your, your list of people to reach out to. I, we do, as far as what we know, and, and would have to be verified, a purchase purchase was not put through proper channels. That's very obvious. And nothing ever went through a finance committee or a city council meeting. It's very obvious, correct? It's not correct. So it didn't go through proper channels. Another thing, I, I'm familiar with the purchase program, and there's no taxes paid on vehicles either. So there's That's no right. issue with tax evasion or, or um, tax evasion, I guess, uh, 
if these obviously were never used for the city purpose ever. I mean, obviously with the, with the records we have, the tollway records, um, there's no tollway that goes through the city of Blue Island. There's no um, Niles. We had no business being in Niles. Corcus was never an employee and whoever else was driving it was never an employee. Um, so these vehicles are being used with police packages, police plates, um, hit and run, tickets on a tollway. They didn't pay taxes for the vehicles. I mean, there's so many things here that are obvious to me that I would think are, are breaking some rules here. And you've already agreed that it seems very suspect and that's criminal activity has happened. Um, we, and I like Alderman Donahue who said, we all want to put this to bed. I think I've even talked to Alderman Johnson. We want to put this to bed. The cars have been sitting in storage for over a year now, and we don't know what's going on with them or what the situation, and we want to put this to bed as quickly as possible. And we know how other investigations go years and years and years. And we just want to kind of put this to bed and, and find out what happened and, and move forward. So I, I would agree with Alderman Donahue. What can we do to help you with that process to close this chapter um, of a black eye that we received with the, the two Tahoe situation? So that's pretty much what I had to say about that. And uh, it, you've already given some ideas what we can do. You know, if you could think of immediate, immediate things that we can do, I, I, I'm all ears. Uh, before you go on, can I ask a couple, a couple of questions? Um, yeah, go ahead, Alderman Johnson. Is, is, is um, uh, Shante Rains on one of those question lists? Because she was at the start of uh, Augustin, Augustino's tenure with the city of Blue Island. So any documentation having state that he did any work for us, for us, would come through her. Have you spoke to her and if she's on your list? Second of all, you just stated that the state's attorney said for you not to impede in on a current investigation that's still now open. So the information that you've actually given us now is information that we have already received. So what new are you bringing to us? Well, I think the, 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 the new that we've brought to you, um, in addition to obviously the, 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 the fact that these various parties have not cooperated with our investigation is uh, a little more in terms of the, uh, the history potentially with uh, Mr. Horvath and his firm, Mr. Corcus, uh, and the, uh, the website the domain name. Right, but we already had the information from Kerry that he gave us back early the year or the last of last year. I mean, the last of last year. We already had that information that he gave us. What I'm asking, are you going, are you, if you intend to go on with this investigation, because right now we don't have anything no more than we already know. Second of all, I wouldn't want us to be in a position to impede with a federal investigation because that came out of your mouth. That's what you stated or a state, a state investigation. My thing is, is, is since, because Kerry Horvath, oldest and Sturt was not the attorneys when um, the mayor started and Augustino and John Rita came in with him. So my thing is that the, a lot of the um, um, documentation that you're seeking cannot come from Kerry because he didn't have anything to do with it from that beginning, but he was here doing the Tahoe thing. So I'm asking you, if you intend to, to go back to and ask Shante Rains who signed or per se allegedly may have signed paperwork stating that this man has done any kind of work for the city of Blue Island to uh, uh, even state that he had the authority to buy a vehicle. Okay, uh, well, a couple of things. Uh, no, I have not spoken uh, to Shante Rains. I don't believe Shante Rains is a name uh, that I have on my list, but I'd be happy to uh, to speak with uh, with, with uh, uh, Ms. Rains to determine whether or not uh, there's uh, ever any agreement with Mr. Corcus. Uh, I do want to clarify one thing. So with my communication with the state's attorney was to make sure that we were not going to impede any investigation. And I received that assurance. In other words, Mr. Acosta, go ahead and investigate whatever you need to investigate. You're not going to impede our investigation by doing so. So I just wanted to make that uh, very, very clear. We're not we're not doing anything that's going to uh, be of any concern to to the state's attorney. 
okay, because my thing is really we can't any do anything as long as as long as that investigation is ongoing, right? Because my thing is now is that I'm paying or spending the taxpayers' money on you to do some things that you really handcuff per se, because there's only so far you can go. Yeah, uh, as far as the ongoing nature of the state's attorney's investigation, I will tell you just simply from experience that uh, they are very, very hesitant to ever tell anyone that they have closed an investigation. As a matter of fact, um, I'm not aware of that occurring in my experience at all. Um, so <clears throat> they they have to confirm the existence of an investigation because a report was made to them in the first place. And when I called, I was put in touch with the person who was overseeing that <clears throat> investigation, but that was more than a year and a half ago originally. Um, I then talked to him again in January of this year before undertaking this, this particular uh, investigation that we've been conducting. So um, I don't know that we'll ever know that they've stopped investigating or that they've closed it, but that's, that's just how those things play out. Yeah, because that's what the state do. But the thing is, is that I think, I think they have a, a little bit better resources than your agency has, right? Or anyone, you know, because they're state level. But the thing is, is that if I believe, this is my only belief, that if it was anything criminal that they would have came up with right now, we would have had somebody under question or in some handcuffs by now. Alderman Johnson. Hey, thank you, Alderman. Any, right. Anything else, Alderman Klinker? Or any questions, Alderman Klinker? I'm sorry. Yeah, the one I had, I think, was already answered. So, Mr. Costa, so you're saying we know for sure that there, there was, at least was, might still be ongoing an investigation at the state's attorney level, correct? That's correct. Okay, because I, that's the first that I've actually heard for sure. And then you mentioned also Mr. Neville is a criminal defense attorney that the mayor's hired. Um, that's so, okay. correct. That was, that was my, one of my questions. As far as we know, and, and you probably don't know the answer to this, the cars are still locked up where we have them in storage? That, that's my understanding. That's your understanding. Yeah, it's probably not something that you, you, you would know, so. Okay, so everything that the mayor said at the, the council meeting on, um, let me look at my date here, January 28th, saying, but again, if this council chooses to appoint special investigator, I will cooperate fully with this investigation. Um, then he went on later to say he's gonna cooperate with any investigation, whether the council hires or don't hire, that's all kind of null and void because he has himself a cr criminal defense attorney. Is that how that works? That's correct. One, one, one little gloss I would put on that is that, you know, Mayor Vargas himself is a criminal defense lawyer. So yeah. um, he doesn't necessarily, you know, need someone else to tell him. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of got that. I just, I just, and I went back and actually watched that council meeting from back in, what I say, January of 2019, as before I was actually in office um, and was interested in hearing that because he did mention at that time, he'd be more than happy to respond to anyone that put questions in writing. I know that at least one committee put questions in writing. I, as a private citizen, emailed them numerous times, probably 25 questions that I got nothing. And I understand his right to, you know, a defense attorney and all that other kind of stuff. It's just the, just the whole thing to me, and this is just my opinion, that, you know, we're, we're going to cooperate, 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 and then we're just going to hide behind everything and hope it goes away, essentially, because we will never know if or what the state's attorney came up with, it pretty much is what you're saying, unless they charge someone with something. Um, and the whole deal with Corcus and this 112,000 hours or 12,000 hours and seven years, that, come, that comes to 42 hours a week that the guy allegedly worked for the city of Blue Island. It all just seems kind of, I don't want to use the word shady, but just not right to me. So, okay. I just, my main question was that we know for sure that the state's attorney did do an investigation and, and that was pretty much my main question. Thank you. Sure. Thank Thanks, Alderman Clinker. Sorry, I, Alderman Blotto, I, I cut you off there. I'll break this door. No, well, I want to address Clinker. Alderman Johnson. Ahead. Alderman Johnson's concern. I, I follow local politics as much as I, any other person or probably more. I mean, just the Posen situation, if I'm sure you're familiar with, was a $25,000 or so um, charges on credit card for gambling or, or whatnot. It took over two years for them to even charge or indict the former mayor of Posen, who later committed suicide over it. But uh, it's over two years and we're, we're getting, we're approaching the two year mark now. We haven't hit it yet, but uh, 
no Alderman Johnson. I think it, the wheels of justice move slowly if, if they move at all. And um, I think we're, we're not even at that point yet. And we're talking 77,000, not 25,000. And there's definitely some stuff that's suspect here between tax evasion, uh, signature, if it's, it's real or not, not being used for city vehicles, at municipal plates, police plates, police packages on cars that we weren't used. I mean, there's multiple things here that are greater than a $25,000 gambling bill in Posen that the, the uh, state's attorney and the FBI came down on. It took over two years for that. So I know I don't think that we would have known something by now by any means. Um, I think everything moves slowly. But um, I, I, like you've said before in the past, I want to put this to bed and put this behind us because I'm sure you've noticed, just like every other alderman, every time the city posts anything, even if it's positive, someone comments about the, let's pay for it selling the Tahoes. What about the two Tahoes and storage? We want to know what's going on. I mean, it, it's an ongoing joke now with the city, with these cars sitting in storage. So we want to, we want to close this up and, and finalize this. And, and I hope there is a state's investigation going on, but there might not be at the same time. So not anymore, at least. And I, I just want to have this over with. So that's why I wanted to comment. I feel the same way, Fred, you know, but my thing is for us to spend more money on some stuff, on some things that's already being done, you know, is redundant. So, you know, and no disrespect to Mr. Acosta, but as a city, we don't have the money to spend like that. Right now, you know, we got stuff locked down for COVID. Um, we need the extra revenue, things of that nature. You know, I would like to put it to bed too, but it's already under a, a certain investigation. And I don't think the city can afford to spend that type of money. Alderman Donahue, I'd like to answer a couple of questions that were brought up in regards to, um, especially my involvement. Yeah, go ahead, Randy. So when when it said uh, that that I approve um, author or check or whatever, I was referring to the resolution that would have been drafted by the city council and approved at city council with my signature at the end of it for the purchase of the vehicles. Um, uh, when the, I called the state's attorney, um, they said that law enforcement would be in touch with me shortly. Several weeks later, the FBI called and they said to sit tight, they want to do some stuff. And all, all these things started to come in the mail and, and like the tickets and the stuff. And I ended up calling the FBI agent and said, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to keep this quiet because things are starting to happen where we're starting to get the tickets and the license plates and the titles. Um, so he says, you know what, we've determined already that this is like a single occurrence, it's not an ongoing thing, do what you have to do to get the vehicles off the street. And at that point is when I went to the city attorney and then they let you guys know immediately after that. But that was, you know, I'm, I'm the whistleblower here. You know, I'm, I, it, took, it, took, it was six weeks of me wondering who was involved with what. And, and it was uh, quite, quite, a, uh, quite a daunting uh, six weeks in my life. And then the vehicles are, yes, they are in storage. Um, I have the keys in my office, so unless they've been towed or moved by a tow vehicle, they're still in storage. Great, thanks, Randy, for the, that update. Is there anything else uh, for Mr. Acosta before we move on? All right, Mr. Acosta, anything else before we, uh, we close? Yeah, I no, I will. Uh, I will. You know, follow up with these uh, additional people uh, to see what we can uh, what we can determine, and if uh, there's any update with respect to uh, Mr. Horvath, uh, where he uh, agrees to uh, speak with us. Uh, obviously, we'll we'll follow up there very very quickly. I do have one last thing, Alderman Donahue. Um, sure, go ahead, Alderman. Mr. Acosta, it seems obvious. I never would have expected um, the city attorney not to cooperate. It, it seems counterintuitive. Uh, he works for the city council and if there's nothing to hide, he would cooperate. Why do you think he hasn't cooperated with you and your multiple requests? I have no idea. I mean, initially the reason he said he wasn't going to cooperate and sit down with us is because he'd already provided all the information that he has. Uh, that's why I responded to him by saying, no, there are a lot of questions that we want to ask you to follow up on, on things that you put in your letter. Uh, and that's, we got no response to that. So I, I can't tell you why at this point, he no longer wishes to, uh, to, to cooperate. What about the firm in general? I mean, we hire a firm, not just a city attorney. And I think he, I don't think he's even technically the city attorney anymore. I think Kelly Burke is the city attorney. At least that was presented to us nearly a year ago. Um, 
maybe we address the, the firm itself and the ownership of the firm in these requests, because uh, I don't even know if Kerry, I know he's our most regular attorney at this council meetings, but he was presented that he was stepping down and Kelly Burke was the new city attorney. So I think we need to address this to the ownership of the firm, Odelson and Sterk, um, Bert Odelson in general, the owner of the firm and whoever partners and, and forward the communications you've sent over and to, to the ownership of the firm or the shareholders of the firm, the partners of the firm. Yeah, I, just can't believe, I can't believe a respected institution like Odelson and Sterk is now responding to your, your many attempts of, of questions. And I'm sure it's the same answers that we already have. We just want clarification. If there's anything else that's missing or falling through the cracks that we would know from our city attorney or the firm handling the city attorney's business, which is Odelson and Sterk. And for them not to cooperate with you, I think that's a slap in the face to the city council. So I'd like a letter addressed to them and the partners of the firm. They might not even know this is going on. So I'd like at least the firm, Odelson and Sterk, um, to be contacted saying that we've made multiple requests over six months with, with no responses to sit down on an investigation that was voted on by a supermajority of the city council. I think, I think it's just, to you as a, as a fellow attorney and former prosecutor, how do you feel about not being responded to by, by a city attorney being paid by tax dollars? So Fred, you're, I'm really quick. You're right. It's just not the city council. They're, they're the city attorney. We pay them well over every billing invoice is $32,000 that comes out of the city coffers. So again, they have an obligation to the full city to just not protect the mayor. So I, again, I, I already stated my, my opinion on how ridiculous it is they're not cooperating, but I just wanted to clarify. It's just, it's more of a slap in the entire city space, just not the city <clears throat> council that they're not being a participant in this. I never expected this. That's why I'm asking Mr. Acosta, how do you feel as a fellow attorney about this? Just on a personal level. Yeah, I think, I think it's very unusual uh, for someone uh, in, that, in that position uh, to not, not cooperate with what is clearly an authorized investigation by, by the city council. Um, it's, it's, it's very unusual. All right, thank you. All right. Anything else? Mr. Cops, anything to close? No, nothing else. I will follow up on uh, the various points that have been brought up tonight, and I appreciate uh, you know, your time very much. All right, we appreciate you uh, updating us and briefing us on this matter. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you again soon. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, um, so we're gonna move on with our regular, the other scheduled programming we have. First is uh, it's an ordinance, intergovernment agreement, round emergency medical transportation. Uh, I believe this is Chief Rita. If you'd like to go ahead, just to give a brief explanation of what we got here. Go ahead, Chief. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, did everyone get a chance they got a copy of, of the ordinance? This is uh, something that we brought up last year, uh, both in public health and safety. I think it went to finance too at some point. Um, but this is, what this is, is it's just an ordinance or um, an intergovernmental agreement between us and the state of Illinois um, that if we enter into it and we start collecting money on this ground emergency medical transport bill, um, that they get a percentage, which I believe is 50% back to them. So last year it was a little goofy. We had to pay up front to them. This year is we collect and then give it to them. So um, it, it again, some of this ties into, which I had brought up in public health and safety about our, our billing company and some other stuff um, that we may, may potentially be doing. But this is in addition to our uh, regular EMS billing um, on top of it. So it's going to cover the, the cost of Medicare and Medicaid that we don't currently collect. Um, it gives us the opportunity to then collect that, and uh, it, it, it could be a significant increase in our revenue as it results uh, or relates to EMS billing. Hey, thank you, Chief. Any questions uh, from Chief Rita regarding this item? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? Make a motion, Bellotto. Second. Right, second. Clinker. Right. Johnson. Thank you. Oh, Alderman, sorry, Alderman Johnson, he, uh, Alderman Clinker beat you to the second. Um, we have to do a roll call vote. So Alderman Donnie is an aye, Alderman Bellotto. Aye. Alderman Clinker. Aye. Alderman Johnson. Yep. All right, the ayes have it. Um, we're gonna skip item B just to go to C while Chief Reed is right here. Um, Chief Reed, if you just wanted to just give a brief explanation about your budget, budget transfer request. Go ahead, Chief. Um, yeah, as we Hi, done, actually, I think um, committee, I would actually like to speak on that one, um, if you don't mind. Uh, last week in, in last week's accounts payable, 
Uh, one of the questions was about Fair Meadows because that budget line was over budget. And this is actually the budget request to actually cover that negative line item that was brought to question. So um, for that, fair, that budget line was actually negative and we wanted to transfer from one budget line to the next to cover for the, the bill that we actually already paid in the last AP uh, run. So this was the transfer to accompany that discussion that we had last week. Great, thank you, Topeka. Chief, any, anything to add to that? Or is that no, that, that was it. Um, I th and again, I think some of this was cut during the original appropriation. So um, again, hopefully this is in line with what you guys are looking for as far as if we have to move stuff and hopefully next year we can get a more appropriate um, amount for that particular line, actually for all the line items. But yeah, that's, that's correct what Topeka had said. Okay, any questions? Motion to approve. Make a motion. Is there a second? Clinker. All right. We're going to do a roll call vote. Alderman Don, you aye. Alderman Bellato. Aye. Alderman Clinker. Aye. And Alderman Johnson. Yeah. All right. All right. I stand it. Motion's carried. Thank you, Topeka and Chief. All right. Finally, uh, we've discussed this a handful of times. This is the budget transfer that would fund the, the road and abatement program. Um, in the memo, it, it moves it, I believe, from, was it Topeka Professional Services into General general Services, or you can probably- Yeah, so I, so I did, according to uh, the contract, I wanted to move it on an as-needed basis so we can do a, a, pr a precise tracking of the expenditures and the requests that are going along with this abatement program. So the two budget lines I recommended was professional consulting to do the transfer from, because we haven't used that line. We have $10,000 that was appropriated and the $10,000 is remaining to the contract, the other contractual services line um, on an as needed basis. So I recommend $1,000 each time. And so this will be the initial $1,000 transfer that I was recommending to the committee. Great, all right, any, any questions? Uh, this is Alderman Bellotto. I'll make a motion to do this and let's just get going with this. I know it's like my chicken ordinance in community development. We sent the judiciary. I'm, I'm, I'm getting frustrated with things not moving fast enough. And this is one of those things I think we've talked about at four different finance meetings over and over again. I just want to get it going. I'll second right. that. Thank you. All right. Uh, roll call vote. Alderman Donnie, you aye. Alderman Bellotto. Aye. Alderman Clinker. Aye. And Alderman Johnson. Yep. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, any aldermatic comments or concerns? Yeah, I, I just have one real quick while Chief Dan's on the yeah, phone. Yeah. So um, we talked about at our public health, last public health and safety meeting about paramedic and Chief Dan had a, a little presentation. Um, and we're, we're, I'm hoping to get him and obviously he's got some more information I'm hearing um, to put something together to come to finance so we can look into figuring out how we're going to do this. So I will send you an email, Kevin. I haven't done it yet, asking to put him on the agenda for a future meeting next week or the week after. Cool. So we can, you know, get the ball rolling on this from the finance end of it because the uh, public health and safety was all behind it. We didn't vote on it. We just kind of discussed it. So be looking for that from me cool. so we can get him on an agenda. All right, would, sure thing. Would it be, would it be okay? Because my thoughts were, is, is I sent that email to everybody earlier or, or today or Friday. Um, the thought was to go through with the proposal on the 18th of public health and safety and finance on the 24th. Would that work for everyone? That works for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, what, what, was the, what was the day for finance again, Chief? The 14th? 24th, the 24th. The 24th? Of, yeah. So it'll go through public health and safety on our next meeting, which is Tuesday the 18th, and then through finance the following Monday on the 24th. Yeah. yeah. That's all right, that's perfect. Fine here. Thanks. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Uh, anything else? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion, Bellotto. Your second. Uh, clinker. All right. Uh, roll call vote. Alderman Downey, you aye. Alderman Bellotto. Aye. Alderman Clinker. Aye. And Alderman Johnson. Yeah. All right, we are adjourned at 7.15 p.m. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next Monday. Um, I believe that's August the 10th, so we'll see you August 10th. Bye.